Hi, I'm Cindy Cloward with Riley Blake Designs, and I'm going to show you how to bind your quilt or project. Let's get started. Now it's very common to bind with a stripe. So I have this fabric here, and as you can see the selvages, you would never cut along the length of your fabric. It usually the stripe goes the wrong way, and there's no give to this side, and it, it really wouldn't look good. This is cross grain going across from selvage to selvage. There is a little more give. You would never use it on a quilt that has curves. It's usually used if you want the stripes facing that direction. It's also used for wall hanging quilts or quilts that don't have a lot of wear and tear. The best way to bind a quilt is on the bias. It's on the 45 degree angle. And look how much stretch it has. If you have any kind of curves on your quilt edges, you would need to cut your bias strips um, from the fabric like this. And it gives you more strength because there's more fibers. The fibers are crossed, and so you have a lot more strength on the bias. So if you have a high wear and tear quilt, um, you're gonna wanna use this method. I'm gonna show you two different looks of binding. So pretend this is a quilt. This actually has been quilted with the top and bottom fabric with batting in the middle, so you can get the general idea. So this binding has been cut cross grain. And you can kind of take a look and see how that would look. Fold it on your project, it looks nice. Sometimes I like my stripes running that direction. So this is binding cut on the bias. And that's really nice too. Sometimes you just love a diagonal stripe. So let's talk about cutting our binding fabric now. So we'll pull this out here. And I like to do two inches binding. It makes a really tight, nice binding. The only time I make it larger to two and a half is if I have minky on the back and it's really fluffy and it needs a little more, little more um, binding on that. So, but if I have a cotton top and a cotton bottom, I do two inches. And it's just really easy to do it. You get your ruler and you measure it up. And you got your two strips. Now let's talk about cutting on the bias. Because you're getting that 45 degree angle. Now you can cut on the bias as small as a fat quarter but we have a little more fabric here. So let's, it's all about getting the longest edge. On the 45 degree angle. So see this, this is on the bias. And you're going to, I'm going to fold it over like this, fold it over like this. And my first cut will be to cut off the edge that's folded. So I'll put that away. And then since I'm kind of right-handed, I'm gonna cut it, flip it over this direction. And I'm cutting my two inches. All right. This is a small project, so I probably just need two strips. So first I'm gonna show you how to connect your strips, the ones that were cut on the cross grain. Of course, you always have to cut your selvages off. Sometimes that's easier to do before you cut your binding, but we have them on now. So I'm opening this up. We always sew right sides together. And you're gonna make, you're gonna cross these because 
you're going to sew diagonally. So if you sewed it like this, you'd have this really bulky seam right there. So what we do is we cross it and we sew diagonally so you have a seam that um, doesn't fold on itself so there's less bulk. So you cross. So you're crossing um, your, your two fabrics and you do that because you can't match it, line it up and then when you fold it over they're going to be misaligned. So you need to offset it a little bit. And so I usually mark it. Sometime you can get a good idea. So you got this little V. You're going to sew from V to V. And it's always handy to have a little ruler and a pencil. You can throw a pin in it real quickly to keep it in the right position as you go to the machine and sew. Okay, let's take a look. Before I cut anything, I check and make sure my binding looks all lined up, and it does. The stripes even match. So we can go ahead and excuse my, again, always handy to have a little ruler. And then you can finger press them open, and then I do open them up put a little heat on there, give it a good press, like that. And so now you can have a good visual of how nice that is not to have the binding straight across, that the bulk is spread across like that. So that is cross grain binding. Now you've got your binding on the bias, so let's talk about that real fast. It's been cut on an angle, but the premise is still the same to how to seam these together. So again, you want it one continuous strip and you can't just flip it over like that. You've got to sew from V to V. So you kind of line it up like this. Again, straight up, right angles. Use your little measuring tool and note where the V is on that side and the V is on this side. Again, you can always check yourself and flip it over, but I'm confident that's where to sew, so let's take it to the machine. Now this has already been trimmed because it was already cut on the diagonal and you just check it. That's just perfect. Open your seams, take it over here to press open and now you're going to press um, your bias binding and you fold it in half. I give it a good spray with starch and this is important um, to line your two edges up. Very important. Because what happens if you don't is you'll miss an edge when you're sewing. And then it won't be tacked down. So it's just important. Now what, what's also important when you're ironing bias, and I just caught myself doing it, is not stretching it. It's really easy to stretch it and then it gets out of shape and then it gets really hard to work with. I guess I could stand in front of this iron. Again, that's distributing that bolt by sewing it diagonally. Uh, 
Wow, so you've got your bias on the diagonal. So that's ready to go. Now let's do our cross grain. And sometimes I really do love stripes facing this way. So I make sure the project is not gonna have a lot of wear and tear and sometimes it's fun to have stripes face straight and then on the diagonal. Again, I think stripes are the most popular bias binding because a lot of people like to cut stripes on the diagonal. Okay, this is ready to go. So the next step is putting your bias binding or your binding on your project. So now I'm gonna to talk to you about how to sew your binding to your project. So you've got your binding ready to go. And you're not gonna start in a corner. And I use plenty of a tail. You kind of leave um, probably four or five inches out. I'm going to start sewing here and then I'm going to sew to the end. I'm going to show you how to do a mitered corner. Now what you need to do is just measure a fourth inch from the end and I marked it with a pin. So let's take this to the machine and sew to the corner. Now this is a good time. I'm gonna actually change my foot right here. And I'm gonna use my fourth inch seam guide foot. So it'll give me an accurate fourth inch. So I'm just going to change that really quickly. There we go. Just getting to that fourth inch. I kind of do just a back stitch. Then I'm going to show you exactly how you're going to do your mitered corner. So you have your um, bias. Well, it's actually not biased, your binding. And you've sewn to a fourth inch to the end. Now you're going to take your binding and do your diagonal right across here and how you know you've folded it the correct way is this line is all the same. Then you're going to fold it back on itself not quite to the edge just a little bit away from it Then finger press and you're ready to start sewing the next dire direction the next side. So let's take it to the machine and finish our corners.
Okay, so I just finished sewing all my sides and my corners, but notice I did leave a space open close to where I started because we're going to seam our two ends and we're going to do kind of an invisible seam so you won't notice where we started or stopped. But before I do that, I just check my binding, make sure I got both sides were sewn in. It looks good. I use a small set of scissors for this. And I'm going to cut right here. Okay. I also need my ruler. I'm going to cut right here. You're going to overlap your binding. Now you're not going to cut anymore until everything's measured. So my binding's two inches. And so I'm going to, this, I'm showing you how to do it. So I'm kind of doing it upside down. So I'm going to clip through your strips like this. Just make a little tiny clip like that. And then from that seam, I'm going to measure my two inches, which is my binding. I'm going to mark it. And that's where I'm going to cut the top. I'm not going to cut the bottom there, but see where I made that clip on the bottom? I'm going to cut through on that. So you've got an overlap of two inches, which is the width of your binding. It would be more if you had a two and a half inch binding. So now I'm going to seam um, my last two pieces. And of course you have to go right sides together. And you don't have enough, um, it's a little fiddly to work like this. So I kind of bend this over and I put a pin in so I can have some workspace to work on my binding. So it's not fighting with me. So I open this up. And then right sides together, I cross it a little like a V, like this. And I'm going to give myself a little more workspace right here by taking a couple of these stitches out. So I can fold this over. This is a little fiddly, as you can tell. I'm going to cross those. I'm going to take a pin like this. And I'm going to show you right where to stitch. Now you can take a look right here and you're going to stitch corner to corner. And I'm going to mark that so it's easy to see where to sew. So I'm going to flip it around where it's easier for me to mark. And let's take it to the machine. But before I do that, I just make sure I'm on the right path and it looks like, yep, that's right what I need to sew. I still have my quarter inch foot on, but it's okay. I can still use it to sew across. Make sure my bottom is fully flat. I'm going to use that line as my guide. Okay, I'm going to take it back over. And look, look how that works. Just flattens out, but now I'm going to cut the bulk out of that now. So I'm going to take that. Open my seam, distribute the bulk even more. 
put it down there, take it to the iron to press. Look how nice that looks. And now I'm gonna just finish sewing from here to here. So now I've sewn completely all around the quilt. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to finish the binding. So now that you've got your two projects sewn with binding on them, this one's bias binding and this one's cross grain, I'm going to show you how to finish. Now my favorite way to finish is to hand bind. I love to do hand work. And how I do that is um, I sew with a needle and thread. Now you need to decide which way you're going to do it before you start your project, before you start your binding on. Because when you do your hand sew, you usually do it on the underside of your quilt. So you, the nice finished edge is on the top part of your quilt. So your big design, your big pieced quilt needs to be on the top and you're gonna hand bind on the bottom. It's just the opposite when you're machine bind because generally you like to bind from the back and roll to the front because when you roll this over, you have more control in sewing and you have a better line and it looks more finished if you bind, you machine bind from the top. So I've got my needle and thread because I'm ready to hand bind. And I'm gonna make a knot in the end. Real quickly, you've got your needle, wrap your thread around and pull it to the end. You've got a nice knot. Now you, you can usually, um, well, generally, you just hide your knot. I start from the underside and I just kind of hide my knot. Now what is great about these new clips is you can tack down your binding before you even get started. And you can go around the entire quilt so it's easier, it holds down your binding as you sew. And as you come um, to one of these, you just take off the clips. So I'm gonna start near to, uh, to a corner so you can see how I do my corners, my mitered corners. So I've hidden my knot underneath and I'm coming up like this. Now when I do my binding by hand, um, you advance your thread underneath the binding so it's hidden. So you're just going right next taking a little bite of fabric and then you come up. So you don't see you advancing your thread along the top. It's all hidden underneath. So you take little teeny stitches. And do you see how you just hand sew along? This is easy because I can use my stitch length because um, I'm using white thread. I can go almost to white to white, so it gives me a good gauge of where I should be hand sewing. Almost, got a little bit of pink that time. And I think hand binding is, it's one of my favorite things to do. I can just sit in front of the TV and and it's just so relaxing. Plus, it's just very exciting to put the finishing touch on your quilt. And you have a lot of control when you hand bind. So I'm getting to my corner. So I'm gonna miter the corner by folding it over. So I take it like here and I fold over. So you've got a nice mitered corner. Do you see that? And I go up here and then I just tack down that miter. Sometimes I even go up a little bit higher and come back down. And you can really, you have good control when you hand sew and you can really hide your stitches. Now I'm going the other direction. So that's how you hand bind your, your quilt. 
Now it would take a, a little while longer, but I think the results are great. So let's talk about machine binding. So this is gonna be the top of my quilt, our project, and why I love to use two inch um, strip binding is because I use my fourth inch foot, it's already folded over, and so when I pull this binding over, you wanna cover this top stitch right here, the stitch from where, where you adhered your binding. So it's gonna come over and cover, and it fits perfectly right on the top of that. And you can use pins or clips. And kind of go around. And on my mitered corners here, I just kind of pivot um, around those. So you're just making sure you tuck in all your loose ends and you're making sure that that stitch line is covered. Uh, and, I, and a lot of times I don't pin, so I can just go to the machine. Um, I, I'm trying out this foot. Like I said, I generally don't machine bind, but when I do, I really like to use this foot. And it has this fourth inch um, guide mark in the middle. It's kind of a stitch in the ditch foot. But it holds that binding right there to the edge. And then I move my stitch um, over to the side. So it's just top stitching right along there. And it's keeping that guide of keeping that fabric right in position. So let me just move over my stitch. Think about right there. Put my foot down. And you can use an open toe foot, that's perfectly fine, but I like the control this gives me. And I seem to have good results. Take a look, and I'm using a little darker thread so you can just see the top stitch all along there. So I'm going to get to the corner. I'm going to back stitch slightly because I need to miter this. This is going to be a little tricky. I'm going to tuck that in. There we go. Got a couple little threads sticking out. That's just gonna go up. Now I'm gonna pivot my machine. Okay, so I'm just crossing where I started. And I'm, I just kind of do a slight back stitch and then just go forward. Clip my ends. And I bring it here. And now we've finished. We've finished sewing all around our binding. And whether you like to hand sew or machine sew, now you know how to bind your quilt and projects.